let's take a look at a, a screenshot from my custodian's trading platform for bonds. And I'll explain some financial jargon that's used for buying or selling a bond. The first is YTM, yield to maturity. And the percentage formula is today's price combined with the coupon rate multiplied by how many days remaining until that bond matures. Next is the yield to call, YTC. And this differs from the YTM, yield to maturity, in that some bonds can be called back by the issuer before the final maturity date. This call feature is almost always beneficial to the issuer, not the debt buyer. The issuer, they want the flexibility to refinance at a lower rate if it comes out and they would be worth it for them to pay a small premium for this right to do so. Someone creatively called this a premium bond or a premium call. Or sometimes there is a premium and you're simply called back at par or issuance. Bonds with call features are not as highly valued compared to those bonds that have no uh, call features. Because when you buy a bond, you will want um, uh, to know if your bond has potential to lose uh, value if it's called back. And this is expressed as YTC or yield to call. Without getting into too many details, sometimes a bond can have multiple call dates and each year that passes by, matures, the premium might decrease. A third acronym, is YTW, or yield to worse. And if you're a professional, you always have to explain this number to your client prior to purchase. Yield to worse doesn't factor in default potential. YTW calculation is based on the current price paid and worse potential return if the bond was called or matures. Finally, there is current yield, which expresses the annual bond income divided by today's price. Many people presume an individual bond is harder to purchase than a stock. If this is the case, then how do you buy an individual bond? So to clarify, some bonds are very easy to purchase and they include CDs, certificates of deposit, which can be bought at your bank or from some online platform. You can easily buy government savings bonds from usually the same sources. Now corporate bonds and municipal and government agency bonds, they can sometimes even be bought or purchased directly but the minimums are often beyond the needs of individual investors. Okay, so then where do you go? And what are you looking for in buying individual bonds? Let's, uh, let's take you to some screenshots of my client custodian fixed income inventory pages. What you should look for in a bond to determine what is um, best is determined by the investor's needs. So I'm gonna briefly explain in this overview because each investor's need is different. What I can do is share some of my financial screens and filters and use and tell you why and explain my process and thinking. And hopefully this added knowledge can help you become a better investor. At the top of my fixed income screen, you see several tabs. And uh, for this lesson, I'm going to focus on the investment grade, high yield and CDs. So first investment grade. This is uh, defined when a credit issuer has a rating higher than uh, the various, various uh, rating agencies. So there's different chart here. There's different agencies. And each one has their own rating. Here's a chart that shows how some of those rating agencies define the difference between investment grade and junk bonds, also known as uh, high yield. If you're not investment grade and above, then you are high yield and considered riskier. My investment grade tab has six uh, sub tabs and I'm going to briefly review each one and explain some of the things I search for and filter through. Now a corporate bond is a company debt. Based on my filters, you can see I am first focused on bonds with maturities between three and five years. That's right now. I also have a filter for a specific bond from utility company I'm looking for. And there's certain certain sectors I am avoiding currently. This could all change. Let's take a look at both of these results. The Edison bond market result looks like this. The QCIP is the ID for this bond and unique to this issuance. If the same company issued another bond, it would have a different QCIP. This section on seniority is very important. It has to do with payback order in case a company goes bankrupt. 
See, there's a hierarchy pyramid that goes into who gets paid and in what order a company goes bust, bankrupt. And this chart shows the order of payees if a company goes bankrupt. You see, bondholders get paid before stockholders. And from the bondholder group, that one section over there, there's also a sequence of getting paid first and senior, secur and senior secured is the highest. This means they are senior and get paid first and their debt is also secured by a specific asset or assets. Senior unsecured means you get paid next, but your debt is not backed by any specific asset. So if there's no money left over from an asset sale, then you may not receive all that you are allowed owed. The coupon right here is the rate, what the bond pays for annual yield and does not reflect the yield, current yield. Here's an example of a bond priced at 102 with a 5% coupon. If you buy these 10 bonds, it'll cost you this. Coupon frequency. Now, most of the bonds I purchase are fixed, but some are variable. But most corporate bonds pay two times a year, but some specialty bonds spread their payments out monthly. Some consumers like this steady flow monthly income. Accrued means what's built up or accumulated Calendar uses a 30-day month and a 360-day year to determine what has uh, accrued over what time period. You see, because the common question is what, uh, well, I get this all the time, is uh, if you're a bond buyer and seller selling, what happens to all the interest in between payments? Well, if I sell it before the next uh, interest date or final maturity, look, if you sell early, the interest is still accrued and paid back to the seller by the buyer within that transaction. Interest is not lost for selling early in this scenario. Although some certificate of deposits and specific uh, specialty bonds can forfeit uh, their accumulated interest if you sold early. The dated date is when the bond was issued. Now, here is a section for our yields and based on the ask for buyer or the bid for sellers. Now ask, is the most you're willing to pay to buy. And the bid is the least amount you're willing to accept to sell. And I will briefly explain the other tabs within the investment grade. Governing, government agencies are comprised of direct debt, such as Federal Housing uh, Authority, FHA, or Small Business, SBA, or Government National Mortgage, Jenny Mae, GNMA. GSEs or government sponsored enterprises are not departments of our government. And they include uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. And there's a big difference in the guaranteed debt is part of the government balance sheet and those that are implied debt is merely a moral obligation. Now, most agency bonds are exempt from state and local taxes, but each state is different. Freddie, Fannie and Farmer Mac are all fully taxable. Mortgage-backed securities are typically the uh, GSE backed by housing loans. Municipal bonds are issued by, you guessed it, municipalities. Now the interest on these bonds are often fully exempt from federal and state taxes and also known as double tax-free. And it makes sense that governments would offer this extra incentive for bond purchases because investors, they're supporting the infrastructure uh, with uh, their state, you know, typically all the money goes into an infrastructure within a state or the, the mass benefit. I've purchased millions of dollars worth of municipal bonds in a single day, countless times over my career. And here's why. Rich people and high income people love the safety and reliability of high quality municipal bonds and their tax-free advantage income. During the market panic of 1997, I remember a Beverly Hills bond, municipal bond, selling close to a 7% double tax free yield. I bought as many as I could before they got sold out and the yield dropped back down to normal levels. You have to be very careful when buying debt from municipalities. Now in general, in general, this is for me, I rarely buy revenue back bonds from airports, toll roads, or hospitals. And I do like bonds backed by utilities, schools, and general obligations of the state or county. And the reason is the variability of the income and the assets backing them. For example, a toll road's income will vary greatly with the use, but a water utility, they have more reliable income 
And in times of crisis, people still use their water and electricity. So those bonds, they have a higher safety and they're more reliable. Because of this, the marketplace, well, they're smart. They price these bonds higher, higher quality. Bonds at lower yield, you get pay more and you get less return compared to a toll road bond, which price higher, US uh, yield higher. US Treasury are T bills with maturities ranging from zero to 18 months. T notes with maturities of 18 months to 10 years and 10 to 30 years, that's a uh, T bonds. Now US Treasury zeros, or better explained simply as zeros, are part of the bond market created by stripping out, they take away the principal from the interest. Zeros are often ignored by investors who want the benefits of crude, excuse me, they want the benefits of current dividend payments. The vast majority of investors could not explain a zero bond, so hopefully you have some added knowledge and a trivia question to share with friends. Now, a common example of a zero coupon bond is an investment in an EE savings bond, grandparents given to grandchildren all the time. You don't get your return or interest until maturity. That's right, no monthly check. You buy a zero at a discount today and it slowly accretes over time until you receive your principal. The closer to maturity, the closer the value will be paid to its face value. Example, if you bought a $100 savings bond 30 years ago, let's say, just for the sake of argument, 50 bucks is what you paid for it. It matures on 2020, right about now, for $100. You go to your bank and you get $100 if you deposit it. But you started with $50 investment 30 years ago. Over time, that bond built up capital it didn't distribute the income because its interest payment had been separated from the principal. Imagine you're making a car, house, or other payment. Each payment probably includes some principal goes to pay, paying down the uh, bet, debt. And the interest part is for the bank, so profits, but taking the risk of the loan. Now there are investors out there who buy and sell those components of principal and interest and the bonds paying no interest are called zeros. And they could be for any type of bond issued if there is a market in that debt. High yield bonds are the politically correct uh, term for junk bonds. And just because you're not investment grade does not mean you aren't risk reward worthy of a debt investment. Born from high yield issuance in the Drexel Burnham uh, Milken days, and so were many other companies like Cablevision, uh, TCI, and Macaw Cellular, ten, uh, Tenor Networks. Some of the world's most successful investors have gained controls of companies by purchasing their debt or distressed debt, where some investors simply find the bargains in the junk pile and get a high current yield and then total appreciation of their bond purchased uh, at a premium. Then total appreciation of their bond purchased at depressed prices grows higher as the company gets stronger.